Yeah. It seems like compared to crossing, you're very confident on shooting because you didn't take yeah. it. I thought you were going to take extra touch. You might have taken a player on. Singapore, Seb. unbelievable weapon. Absolutely. Singapore boys, we absolutely love it. Come on, up the tag. Let's do it for the Singapore. Obviously, my name is Klein from Scout Me Online. Okay, let me give you a quick bit of context for what Scout Me Online is. So let me send you guys over to myself. Scout Me Online is an online scouting platform that looks for unknown players like you and me, break down their games up until about 542 different data points. So if you're an aspiring professional footballer, or you just want to look for a team in the future, this could be the platform for you. So all you have to do right now is go ahead and check the link in my Instagram bio. Once you go onto their website, create a profile and upload a full match onto YouTube. Once that's done and it's uploaded onto the website, they will get in contact with you. Once they've analyzed your game, you can not only learn how to become a better player, but also potentially get scouted as well. So yeah, go and check them out. Again, shout out to Scout Me Online for this opportunity. So in this call, I'm going to go through your performance, okay? So we've got a small team of analysts who uses our software. They watch your full match videos on YouTube, the one that you've uploaded for us, and they tag everything you do in terms of attacking and defensive actions. Just before I'm going to present your data, I'm just going to walk you through this platform, how it works. So what we're trying to do as a business, doubt me online, most of us, we want to become a professional football player, and majority don't have the right connection. So there's a saying, you could be a great player, but no connection, no one's gonna know you. You could be an average player, but you've got loads of connection, people can open the door for you, you've got better chance, okay? So I'm not completely saying this guy won't get any chance at all, it's just he has the better advantages. Most of the players we're working with, they're coming from lower divisions. And there's always this bias that a player who's coming from Arsenal's academy or Premier League teams, they're going to get more interest from other clubs because of the CV, the background. They call it pedigree, which means, in other words, who's been educated in terms of the football mentality, the skills and all other attributes. Because if you're a coach, you've got pressure, you need to deliver and in a better position to work with a player who's been well-educated at a higher level versus a player didn't get good education in terms of football. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So Scout Me Online, we became a performance analysis company to analyze players' game because we get loads of players saying, please help me. It's like they're begging, but you can't help. And it costs money to travel around the world to see players, right? And one game is not enough. So we tried to do something smart, which was give us the full match video, we analyze your game, and there's two things you're going to get. Your player profile with data, which I'm going to show to you, and you get the analysis profile. If these things confirm to us that both data and video analysis is convincing that you're a good player, we want to promote you to the clubs. So on the other side, we're trying to work with lots of clubs to see who they're looking for, what sort of players they're looking for. So we want to feed the players over to scouts or agents. So I'm hoping your data is very good. So in quick brief, just tell us who you are, what you do, and where are you with your football career? And I will show you your data in a moment. Okay, hi, I'm I'm Myron Chwadrun. I'm a, I'm a semi-professional footballer. 
So for this upcoming 2023-24 season, I'll be playing for Alicante City FC. Okay. Uh, they are a sixth-tier Spanish team. Mm-hmm. And I felt that in Singapore, at the level I was at, I was playing for technically our third tier which was called SFL Division 2. And I had a good season, but I felt that I was stagnating in my career. I had an injury back in 2019. I tore my ACL in, I think, around March 2020. There's been no football that's been played until last year, May 2020. So outside of the professionals, which uh, which is the Singapore Premier League, no football was being played at any level below that. Obviously, last, last season, I got back into playing for Ballester United RC. I had a good season. The team didn't do so well, unfortunately. I came in as a mid-season transfer. Uh, we ended up getting relegated, but I felt like that that was a good step in my career, but I felt almost after the season was done, I was going sideways. So I'm just going to search for your uh, profile. And I think you said you play right wing, right? Uh, I play across the front line. My preference is more towards the left wing, but then for that season with Ballester United, the coach needed me to play off the right side more. Winger, you're 175 centimeter tall, 70 kg, you're right footed. Okay. So you said you like playing left wing. I'm guessing, you know, like today's modern wingers to go across and shoot with your right foot. How many goals, how many goals have you scored just this season? Just so, for- if I remember correctly, I scored about five goals and I had about five assists. In 12 games, if I remember correctly. So in terms of right. the last game we've analysed, of all your attacking data we've tagged, there's about 15 attacking data we've tagged in the last game, and 68.2 was successful in terms of defensive, 5 defensive was successful. So you've had 15 successful attacking data, and 7 was failed, whereas defensive you've had 5 defensive successful, and seven defensive players. So I'll just walk you through and just presenting this data to you. This heat map is just telling us where often you did all the attacking data. So your predominantly was running here, did more data attack in this area. If I go defensive, you did run back deeper and you do come just after the halfway line. So you do defend quite a lot. In terms of shooting, if I go to attacking, you took, how many shots did you take? You took two shots, one on target, and the one that was on target was a goal. So one shot went far left and the other shot went middle left side on the bottom area. Okay, this is like your transfer market. I don't know if you know transfer market, which professional players yeah. have, like transfer market, whereas unknown players that we're working with will have your own profile like this. You can copy the link and give it to any person. They will be able to view everything. They can even filter everything. Okay, normally if you had like five or more games, you can filter this page by let's say last 12 matches and you get average performance data and all basic. These are just basic. You click on new stats. This is where you go to your analyst profile. And again, you can copy the URL and give it to anybody, scouts or agents. So if any place was using our platform and we've analyzed your game, and we feel we can't promote you because you're not good enough, you don't have to take our opinion. You can always take this and give it to any other agents. Now, this filtering option is the red line. Okay, so by default, showing team data, but if you go to players' data, and depending on what skills or attributes you're looking at, this will vary. So we're going to click attempt. And what this red line is, we've analyzed randomly a few Premier League matches. So it's not apple for apple because it's got goalkeepers, defensive and attacking players' positions, all data combined together to give us an average. So in terms of a Premier League player, they are doing about 35 short passes on average per game. You did about nine. Okay? I mean, what do you think about this feature so far? I think it's it's a good way to compare because obviously when... When you play a match, let's say you don't look at the footage yet. Just based on what you remember, you there's certain things that you feel, there's certain personal bias that you have, and you'll be like, oh, I did this quite well, I did that quite well. But when you break it down, you know, you have analysts taking a look at how you play it with from an objective standpoint, an outside viewer that's not have any sort of bias to how you play and whether they know you or not, then it's a lot easier to break down your game with numbers. 
Because obviously sometimes there's the eye test and then you've got stats as well. And having both usually is a good way of understanding how a certain player plays and whatnot. In the future, we're going to be showing like left foot, right foot. So when you see the pie chart, just ignore it. This is called intelligent heat map. We kind of named it this way because the traditional heat map has got like heat radiation. Mm. What we're doing specifically is saying, look, we're filtering short pass in the last match. We did nine attempted passes of short passes. And of those nines, two occurred here, two occurred here, two occurred here, and then one across the other areas. Okay? You got seven successful, which is very good, 77 points successful. And it's okay where you take those risks up there that you are um, making more passes there. Where you failed, that's fine. You made one fail there because, as you said, you're taking more risk up there and you're taking another risk up there. But you don't want to get failed passes in your defense, defensive area. Let's have a look at this one. So you tried to cross it to the striker there. Find yep. areas with that. You don't cross often then. Or you're not in a position. So when you're playing as a... Well, did you play as a winger? You said you played as a right wing in this game. Right? Yes. Yep. You had no opportunity to make uh, make the run down the flank and deliver any crosses? Uh, I think based on what I recall, tactically speaking, they wanted to build up more on the left side. So usually, if the ball were to come to me, it would be more in attacking positions, which is kind of why it led to the goal that I scored. I'm just going over, going over there, looking at you... You received the ball, it bounced, you then took another touch. Do you feel you're confident you could have swing this first time after it bounced the second time to not take a touch? Because do you understand? The ball bounced, that's mm -hmm. one second extra delayed. Then the second time you're waiting for it to control. And what that's given is given the defenders the opportunity to recover into a good position. And what you want to do is keep these defenders to be very late, that they don't have enough time to recover. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, look, yeah. let's go 10 seconds back. So, as you said, they like to build up from the left-hand side. Instead of taking a, a, a touch there, can you see, if you had swing this earlier, it didn't have mm -hmm. to be a perfect. Doesn't have to be a perfect cross, but this guy would have been in a good position to control if it's a bad pass or shoot first time. But do you, do you, do you think like this in a game? Like, if I try to be more comfortable, I need to take another touch, wait for the ball to come down, nice and easy for it to be controlled. Do you think like this? Like, I trust myself. I'm going to hit it first time so that I catch the defenders out of position. Do you think like this? When I brought the ball down, I saw that my teammate was open at the back post, but I think I wasn't confident enough to try it first time. And I I hope, and I and trusted in myself that if I took the first touch, either I can draw on the defender to, you know, create more space for him or to take him on and then cut it back into it. But in the end, I tried to play it right after I took that first touch. Okay. Just to be uh, rational and critical thinking, it's not fair for me to make any judgment based on one game. I'm also happy that you're very open-minded and you're open to taking new ideas as well as you're being honest, meaning you wasn't confident enough. And that's very important to be aware of because our natural first thoughts is this. Let me control the ball so that I am in a comfortable position to deliver a better cross. Is that fair to say? We always think like this, right? Yeah. The football of defenders, they're getting smarter, okay? Which means the more I see you taking a touch and you want to deliver this, I'm reading you. So you then got to be two steps ahead and say, I'm going to catch him out. He's not expecting me to deliver this, but I'm going to deliver this quicker. So yeah, that makes sense. In your game, and the key thing you said, which is what I like, you wasn't confident enough. What could you do? If you're saying you're not confident enough, what could you do in this scenario? I mean, practicing that particular scenario. So letting the ball bounce and then trying to practice that skill, crossing it first time. What I would do is what we provide data and video on is, is look, look at this scenario. 
Maybe you get someone to deliver a cross rather than you taking the first touch to control it. Why not side punch it with your foot? Think underneath the ball, not too much weight on it, just for it to go above the defender and your striker to run onto it. Let's look at your shooting because you did score a goal. Watch the goal. It seems like compared to crossing, you're very confident on shooting. Because you didn't take it, yeah. I thought you were going to take extra touch. You might have taken a player on, but you. It seems like you saw the goalkeeper was already off his line. Yep. Let's go back and look at it. So you can see the goalkeeper's off his line. You knew this, right? Because that's why you took the yeah. shot. You took the chance. Nice. Good. So you do have some football brain there. And I'm not saying you didn't have Thanks. it. Often. So it's not saying you, you don't have it. Now that I'm complimenting you here. You're 23 years old. I'm going to be honest. I'm looking for successful stories. So there's no bias on who I'm going to favour. I want to feed place to a club. So there are some scouts we're working with and with some agents. Okay. Some of the yep. Most of the opportunities we've got, they're looking for high profile. I want to be honest. You're not ready for these positions. At the same time, mm. even if you was ready, it's so hard to convince. You're going to the Spanish tier to play in a sixth tier. Yes, correct. Um, I'm just thinking realistically, how can I sell you? Because either your stats is so good, if you go to the sixth tier, and we get, let's say, 10 games analyzed, the stats are so good, perhaps you come back to somewhere like the Indian League or the J League. Uh, but again, we need to start connecting with people. I think you've got some abilities, okay? Now, for a 23-year-old that I've, I've been working with in Portugal, for example, they're so exquisite with their touches, their ball control, their mm. decision-making, and it's still very hard for them to get to Division two because we was working with division three players, and only two players went to division two. Okay, but they were mm. so technically gifted that the clubs already knew them. Plus, they were nineteen and twenty years old. Understandable. Which, which means they saw as an investment. When you're twenty three, they're expecting you to be mature, ready to deliver. So imagine being in our position. I can't sell you mm -hmm. in one game. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about the feedback I'm giving to you? No, I mean, I, I understand the, the reality of my situation. I, I'm very aware that, especially, like you said, when there's a player of my age, there's a certain expectation that comes with it. And personally, for me, I don't think I'm ready for that kind of level either, which is why I decided to take the, the step to go to a place like Spain to go hone my craft and get better from there. And at the same time, perhaps find a certain exposure and then work my way up because i i would say from for myself based on what i've been through i'm a bit of a late bloomer and obviously yes it may not look as good as compared to let's say a 19 year old who has the same ability or even better you know technically that's a lot sharper it's easier to sell because of course like you mentioned it it's a bit of a better investment for clubs so I, I appreciate the feedback for for where I'm at right now. But like you said, I, I don't think I'm ready. You don't think I'm ready either. So I think I think that's a, a fair assumption on, on my situation at the moment. Okay, so that's the, the gap we're filling in. My This is a fantasy thought, is to imagine that we're going to analyze your next five games with the Spanish team. I think it's a good investment to go there. And all you're thinking is you're going to play the game smart. Meaning, if you want us to analyze your game, you improve your game and you get those stats. You get the stats, the number of chances you created, the number of dribblings you've done. Because only that will speak volume. Or you can carry on doing what you're doing. Do your wishful thinking and hope and train hard. Nothing to measure your performance. Nothing to see if there's progress. Nothing to see reflecting on what is working, what isn't working, how can I improve? 
certain things. If you didn't have this tool right now to show you this, mm -hmm. imagine you didn't, this didn't exist, this data analytics service we've just offered mm -hmm. before. If you didn't have this, would you have this conversation to yourself or with someone that you should have delivered in your first touch? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't have controlled the ball. You should have had delivered it. Probably not then, no. And that's the key thing, what we're delivering, is to say, look, at least you can make one progression here. So the next time you're in this situation, you're going to think about this and you're going to get that stats because you created a chance and you scored a goal. Oh, you assisted a goal. If you really value this, I'll leave that at your control. Would love to work with you. I think you've got some potential. I mean, every player's got a potential, but I think the fact that you're going to Spain from Singapore makes me feel like I want to work with you because I think you're serious. Whereas other players I work with, they're like, eh, I'll think about it. And they're going to go back to the common behavior, the common yeah. routine they've done. I think you've got the attitude to go something, to do something more. That's where I yeah, feel that, that makes me feel I appreciate that. Otherwise, look, keep your head up, make it happen. I hope someone else can help you, but I'm willing to help you. And let's get your five next five games analyzed as a milestone and see from there. You can do one game at a time, it's up to you. Yeah, sounds good. I would be looking forward to hearing from you again. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We'll keep in touch then, yeah? Yep, sounds good. All right, take care, Myron. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video and felt that was quite informative. Again, link in the description if you want to sign up. If you watch the video all the way through, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing these videos more often. And yeah, see what the future holds. Yeah, take care. Peace. Nobody believes in you. You've lost again and again and again. The lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over oh, until I win. I'll be with us. Take that.